Nintendo released more online multiplayer details for Splatoon 3. I will be covering them in this video. Make sure you are hitting that subscribe button to stay up to date with everything Splatoon 3. So, yeah, first things first, a lot of people were concerned about the jewelies and the brella coming back to Splatoon 3. And yeah, I was going to make a separate video early on in the month talking about this speculation in the community but the very first thing we did see in that trailer was someone using the jewelers and the brella as well so the jewelers and the brella are returning to splatoon 3 which definitely will please a lot of people out there i do believe the only class we haven't seen yet is the brush class i could be wrong about that we might have seen it in the first trailer we might have seen it in yesterday's trailer but I can't remember seeing anyone using the brush. I definitely expect it to come back. But yeah, I think that might be the only class that we haven't seen yet. I could be wrong about that. I'm sure you guys will correct me in the comments section below. So yeah, a bunch of new stages and special weapons did get revealed. And the first stage we did see in that trailer definitely did remind me of Flounder Highs with the setting with, you know, you saw flats in the background you saw blocks of flats i thought it was flander heights but it's not flander heights it is eel tail alley and it is an old neighborhood in the center of splatsville it has become a hangout spot for the town's youth and the footbridge does extend over this three-dimensional stage making for some accelerating turf wars so yeah, that is the first stage we did see. The second stage is a big one. Museum Alfonsino from Splatoon 1 is coming back within Splatoon 3. Now, I did make a video talking about my doubts about old stages coming back. But yeah, this is related to the job listing we did see when Splatoon 3 did get revealed. We did see a job listing where Nintendo did ask for people to renovate existing stages so yeah that is interesting how Museum Alfonsino is coming back and how Nintendo has explained it coming back because we are in Splatsville Museum Alfonsino is in Incopolis and I did say this within a video earlier on but pretty much how they are explaining us playing on Museum Alfonsino is that a transport network will make it possible for you to play on Museum Alfonsino. So, yeah, it does bring out the question, will any of the other stages that didn't make their way from Splatoon 1 to Splatoon 2, like Bluefin Depot, like Urchin Underpass, like Soul Spray Rig, Flander Heights, I did talk about that earlier, Mahi Mahi Resort, Hammerhead Bridge, will they be coming back as well because Museum Alfonsino didn't make its way to Splatoon 2. So maybe we will see all of the other stages that didn't make their way to Splatoon 2. Maybe they will be returning in Splatoon 3. But I did make a video a couple of months ago talking about if Nintendo are going to explain stages coming back from the first and second game through the train network. I did make a video talking about what stages could come back based on that reason. So now that we do know that we are going to be traveling back to Incopolis through the sophisticated transport network, then yeah, definitely that video is well worth checking out. So I'm not sure whether there are any new elements to Museum Alfonsino, but I'm just really pleased that more people will have the chance to play on this fantastic stage. So. Yeah, we got a sort of like new details about the first stage we did see from the reveal trailer. It is known as Scorch's Gorge. Its towering rock formations are thought to have been undersea hydrothermal vents now appearing on land due to changes in the planet's surface. Apparently, its landscape has made it into a popular tourist attraction within Splatlands and yeah that is an interesting detail about the first stage we did see within the reveal trailer so we did 
learn about some of the special weapons we did see as well as some new ones as well so the crab tank is its official name we did see this in the reveal trailer so it is a crab shaped multi-leg tank and it is equipped with a powerful rapid fire gun and a cannon that boasts a formidable blast radius so it does sound like it will be having two modes and we did see that in the trailer we did get yesterday it will be having two modes so yeah you can sort of move about in its crab form but you will go around you will move around faster in its ball sort of mode so yeah this sounds like a ball art replacement so yeah we did see that the bubbler will be returning from Splatoon 1 it will be working a little bit different to Splatoon 1's bubbler it is known as the big bubbler it will be fixed in place and it will cover a big area that will protect allies that are in that barrier that will be really really good for objective modes I can just see splat zones someone putting that up while you are defending the splat zone so yeah that might be a little bit annoying to come up against now this one reminded me of spider-man a little bit so this is known as the zip caster it is super stretchy and it does have sticky tentacles that let you zip around in all directions that is a big new mechanic for splatoon's gameplay after you use it you will return to the place where you did set it off this is to keep your identity hidden so yeah there will be a marker on the ground so this does sound like an inkjet replacement from Splatoon 2 the tri car is a modified version of the ink car. we did see this in the reveal trailer for Splatoon 3 so yeah the ink car from Splatoon 1 will be known as the tri car. its powerful shot fires three blasts at once and can be fired three times in total each use the killer whale will be returning to Splatoon 3 from Splatoon 1 the six floating megaphones move on its own you will not be controlling it, it sounds like it will attack with lasers that will chase down enemies so yeah that is pretty much all of the online details we did get what is interesting is how they are leaning into the first game for stages and special weapons it does make sense because not a lot of people have experienced the first game on the Wii U they are tweaking things to make it feel new for veterans like myself but yeah I just found it interesting how a lot of elements we have seen so far have been from the first game so if you are a fan of the first game you will definitely be on board with the direction you are going with for Splatoon 1 so yeah, we did sort of learn about that back in February. Of course, we are getting new special weapons and stages to make it feel fresh for players like myself who have played the first and second game. But yeah, it does seem like they will be using content from the first game, tweaking it a little bit. They will be leaning a lot into the first game. And yeah, hopefully we will see all of the stages that didn't make their way from the first game to the second game in this game so yeah, let me know your thoughts about the multiplayer so far i probably will talk more about the multiplayer in a separate video when my voice has fully recovered but that is pretty much it for this video i will see you in another video soon